Hello everyone, today I'll show you what you can start focusing on when you reach level 80 in Wrath of the Lich King. This guide will mainly be focusing on Wrath of the Lich King classic content, so a fresh server, but you can also use this on fresh private servers. I'll also be showing you some ways to catch up a bit faster, in case it's not a fresh server. Anyway, enjoy the video. In case you already have a decent amount of gold, then what I usually do is to head to Dalaran City. Near the Jewel Crafter Trainer, you can find this vendor. Here you can buy different rings, and some of these you can buy with gold, for around 8500. Some of these rings will be best in slot for phase 1, or they will also be best in slot for a lot of phases, or at least close to best in slot. The reason for this is because as you progress in Wrath of the Lich King, the rings will also be able to be upgraded. You will however have to pay a bit of gold in order to upgrade these. Another thing that is important to focus on is your professions. In Wrath of the Lich King, professions will be so good. You will be able to craft different kind of rare, epic items, but some professions can also enchant their own gear with different kind of things. The items that you will be able to craft will also help you when you have to start doing normal dungeons, heroics or raids. What I usually do is just to level my profession while I level my character. That way I might also be able to craft some items that will help me level a bit faster. Some of the professions will also be able to craft a blue level 78 PvP set, but this set is also fairly decent in the beginning when you start doing normal dungeons. So definitely something I recommend you to check out. In Wrath of the Lich King, a new profession is also introduced. This is Inscription, and as an Inscriptor you can for example make different glyphs. This is something you can use on your own character to increase your skills or maybe get a new ability. You can have a total of 3 major and 3 minor glyphs. The price for these all depends on the rarity and how many people can actually craft a glyph on your server. So make sure to visit the auction house in case you are not an Inscriptor yourself. If you haven't already been to the Soul Drag Arena, then I recommend you to check this out. Here you will be able to get a lot of gold, consumables, but also a rare weapon. These quests will require you to assemble a group. You will need a minimum of 3 people and you can do this all the way up as 5 people. The reason why you can't solo this is because it's an elite monster and it's equal to elite bosses in dungeons, so with a high amount of health but also damage. Like I mentioned earlier, you will get a bit of consumables, some gold, and the final quest will let you pick a blue reward. There's pretty much everything for every class and every role, so in case you would like to play as a DPS caster, or maybe a melee DPS, a tank or a healer, then you have an option for a weapon. The only thing that you have to pay attention to here is that all of this is going to be melee weapons. There's not going to be a ranged weapon for a hunter. However, there is a polearm that is pretty decent as a hunter. If you already have your flying mount, then I would also recommend you to try and track down different rares. There are some great add-ons that will help you track these, and the reason why I recommend you to kill the rares is because here you will get some gold, you will get some materials, but you will also get a blue item, and this might be pretty decent in the beginning of Wrath of the Lich King. Next up is the dungeons that I always try to do even before I reach level 80, but also if I haven't done them by the time that I hit level 80. The reason why I recommend you for example Utgard Pinnacle is because here you can pick up two quests. You don't need to do any pre-quest and both of these quests will give you some decent blue rewards. So definitely an instance to check out as fast as possible. In a moment I will also show you the remaining dungeons that I like to do in order to get some easy rewards. Or well, some guaranteed rewards when I do a dungeon. But before I show you these dungeons, then I would also recommend you to check out my Wrath of the Lich King dungeon leveling guide. In this guide I'm gonna show you the dungeons that I do all the way up to level 80, and if you follow this guide then you will gain experience when you do the quest that I'm about to show you, and at the same time you will also save time for when you hit level 80. The time that you save you can simply spend on doing other stuff at level 80. The other dungeon that I recommend you to do is the Oculus. This dungeon is located in Coldera, and you pick up the first quest in Cold Bearer at this NPC. You will now be told to slay the first boss, and once you have done this, you can pick up an amazing ring. There's pretty much everything for every class. In the dungeon, you will be able to do a few follow-up quests, and the last quest will tell you to slay the final boss. Once you have done this, you will head back to the Cold Bearer NPC, where you can claim another blue reward. 
so by doing this dungeon, you will get a total of two blue rewards. The last dungeon that I like to do is Old Stratholm. When you enter the dungeon, you will see a quest NPC, and this quest you can pretty much just solo. Once you have done this, find Chromie, and here you hand in the quest. Now you will be told to slay the final boss, and this will also grant you a blue reward. If you would like to see what to do in the dungeon quest, then you can also find this in the dungeon finder guide that I mentioned earlier. Depending on the phase, or if you play on a private server, then dungeon finder might already be enabled. If this is the case, then you can also get a reward every time you do a dungeon or heroic, so make sure to do this every single day. At the same time, there will also be a daily dungeon quest, and there will also be a weekly raid quest. When you do these, you will also get some emblems. You might be wondering, well, why do I need these kind of epic emblems? Well, the reason why you need them is because you can use them to purchase different kind of epic items. This is purchased in Dalaran City. If you already have a main character that doesn't need the emblems any longer, then you can purchase these braces. As you might notice, these are bind and equip, so you could purchase them on the main character and send them to your alt to gear up a bit faster. You can also purchase these braces on the auction house. All of these vendors will not be available in the beginning, in the first phase, because these were added later on when new content were introduced and new marks or new emblems were introduced. If you play on a private server, then these might be available. If that's the case, then you will also be able to gear up faster to start doing heroics. Another mandatory thing to focus on the moment that you hit level 80 is going to be the different factions and the reputation. Each faction will have different kind of rewards. You can for example purchase different blue, but also epic rewards. So it's important that when you're leveling, but also when you hit level 80, that you know what kind of faction that you have to focus on. Some of the factions will even have different kind of hidden chance, children chance, but also mounts and recipes. The fastest way to get reputation with each faction is to buy the specific tabard. Whenever you do a high level dungeon and you kill a monster or a boss, then you will gain reputation with that specific faction. In Dragonflight you can find this tower, and up here you can find a faction specific tabard. When you reach Exalted, you can also buy an epic flying mount at this window. If you plan to play a healer, this is also the faction where you get a hidden chant. The epic items that you can buy from this faction looks like this. Even though some of these rewards are cloth and mail, then they're still pretty decent even if you plan to play as a holy paladin. The next faction is Argent Crusade. This is located in the beginning of Ice Crown. When you get here, there's going to be a lot of quests. And as this faction, you will for example get the best in slot yet enchant as a tank. A lot of these epics will also last for a long time, even when you start raiding. And if you would like to grind the reputation with Archon Crusade, you should not only come to Ice Crown. What I usually do when I'm leveling is to head to Zuldrak. A lot of these quests in this zone will even grant me reputation with Argent Crusade. So by doing this when I'm leveling, then when I reach level 80, I'll already be honored with Argent Crusade. When I play a Hunter or a melee class, then I usually try to focus on Knight of the Even Blade reputation. This faction is also located in Ice Crown. The rewards that you can get from this faction beside the enchant is decent, but mainly the enchant is the reason why I like to focus on this. A lot of the factions in Wrath of the Lich King doesn't require you a pre-quest in order to be able to start questing with the faction, but with Knight of the Even Blade, that's not the case. Both factions will have to come to Ice Crown and find their ships. At the Horde ship, Horde will have to find this Blood Elf character. This is where you start the pre-quest. To finish this chain, you will have to spend around 20 to 30 minutes. Alliance will also have to find an NPC on the ship, and that NPC is located right here. You will have to do the exact same thing in the quest chain as both factions. The pre-quest is just picked up at the different ships. When you picked up the first quest, you will also receive a quest item. This specific quest item you will have to use at this eye. You will have to use this quest item a lot of times in order to kill this target. And once you have done this, you have to go down and land on the ground. Here you will find this kind of dead knight. The follow up is going to be easy. Near this NPC you will find other creatures that you have to slay. 
when you slay these, you just need to make sure that you loot them. Each of these will drop different kind of quest items and you need to collect all of them. Once you have done this, you have completed this quest. Now the same quest giver will also give you another quest. This quest will give you a quest item that you have to use at three specific targets. To reach these, you will need your flying mount. The third target might be hidden behind this building, so make sure to just use a target macro or something in order to find the target a bit easier. Once you have used the quest item on all three, you're ready to hand it in. The next quest is done in the building to the left of this quest giver. In here you will find this object, you have to click on this and then you will start an event. When you start this event, you will have to kill an elite and you will get some assistance. Once you have killed the target, you have to go back to your specific boat. Hand in this quest and pick up the follow up. When you have returned to the same area, you will notice that it has changed a bit. At this point, you can now learn a flight path, but you can also start picking up some different quests. And at this point, you are ready to start gaining reputation with Knight of the Even Blade. In Wrath of the Lich King, Horde and Alliance also has a Quartermaster. These Quartermasters you can for example find in Borean Thunder, but also in Howling Fjord. These vendors sell different kind of blue items that you can use when you are leveling, but also at level 80, but also a PvP hidden chant. So definitely a faction to also check out. You might also have noticed that there's no tap art from this vendor. This is the case, because if you don't equip a tap art when you do a high level dungeon, then you will automatically gain reputation with the Horde or Alliance specific faction. Whenever you equip a tap art, you will not gain reputation with these. Another thing you can buy at the winter is the schematic for the engineering chopper. Another faction that you have to focus on is the Son of Houdir. Here you can for example buy different kind of shoulder enchants. But in order to get quests with this faction, you will have to do a huge chain, probably 2 to 3 hours or so in order to start getting quests for the Son of Houdir. I have made a complete guide with all the different quests that you have to do and I will link this in the description below this video. There is also some factions in Wrath of the Lich King that I am gonna show you real quick. These doesn't really sell many epic items, but you can for example get different kind of fishing pools, pits and other stuff. The other stuff can for example be schematics, designs or recipes for the different professions. And if you unlock this as fast as possible and if you are one of the only ones to do this, then you might also be able to make a huge profit or charge a huge fee for crafting this for other people. Nonetheless, then I hope this guide will help you start gearing up when you reach level 80 or know what to do when you reach level 80. I know I didn't point out a lot of PvP stuff beside the crafting set, but I will do this in a part 2 in the future. The second part might already be released when you watch this video. If that's the case, then I will leave it in the description, but also in a pinned comment. As always, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Peace.